Hey guys, how you doing today? Um, today's video, I've decided to do my top albums of 2019, uh, and these are new releases for 2019, not reissues or anything like that. Um, I saw Sam the Vinyl Douche do his, and he, um, I think, is doing them in a few installments. Uh, for me, it's just going to be this one video. Uh, I am counting them down because that's what I like to do. I, li I, I do a lot of lists and, and I like to, you know, uh, put them in order and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be 15 albums in total, the top 10. The first five are going to be sort of honorable mentions. Um, the one thing that I noticed uh, about new releases is I'm definitely buying much less new releases um, than I was, say, back in the late 80s, 90s, even 2000s. Um, I don't know if that's just me or, or, or the music, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, one thing I do know is I definitely don't play new releases as frequent as I used to. So that means, you know, back in the late 80s and most of the 90s, um, when I got a new album, like I really played it to death and I really, especially if I liked it, obviously, and uh, I really got to know the album quite well. Um, even though these albums are, are, my, are my favorites of the year, my top 10, um, I definitely don't know these albums as well as I used to know albums back in the 90s. Um, I think the problem is you just got so much, I think we all have this problem, we got so much to listen to where do you find the time to really sink your teeth into an album? And unless it's an album that you really love, you know, you're probably going to play it. I don't know. Um, I, I think I've played most of these probably anywhere from three to five times, if if that. Maybe some, maybe more on some of the higher placed items. Um, you know, maybe around the ten mark, that sort of thing. So they're they're definitely my favorites, but. You know, I just don't know them as intimately the, uh, uh, as I used to know albums uh, in, in the past. Uh, having said that, I'm pretty confident these are my favorites and, and, and that they're in some kind of logical uh, order. Okay? All right. Let me just get these in order here. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, so, again, the first five are going to be sort of honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Um... The one thing that I have noticed is, uh, and, and when I, I think I did this uh, same countdown in 2017, most of these releases are from either established artists who happened to make an album in 2019, uh, solo artists of bands that used that I used to like, and now you know the the lead singer or, or, or what have you. Um, has made a solo album, so I've still followed that that person. Um, I don't really know. I'm just quickly glancing at my list here. Um, I don't think any of these albums, except for one, maybe, is of a newer artist. And and when I say newer artist, uh, you know, the artist may have be uh, started ma making albums in the 2000s. So so there's there's going to be no real sort of you know, this is this band's first album or second album, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe I just, you know, I like what I like and, you know, kind of gravitate towards that. I mean, I'm, I'm open to new music, um, but for whatever reason, um, these new releases are the ones that, that stood out for me this year. Okay. Um, so, uh, Arnold, for, first honorable mention, P.P. Arnold, the... It's called the yeah the new adventures of PP P. Arnold. Um, her of course being the singer back in the '60s who uh, spent some time in the Iquettes um, and also did some work with the Small Faces. Uh, the one thing about this album that's significant for me is the lead track, the first single. It's called Baby Blue. Um, that is my favorite single of the year. And if the rest of this album had been on par with that song, this would have most likely been my number one album of the year. Fantastic song, great 60s soul feel to it. Um, it's a double album, just a shame. The rest of the album is, is, is very good. 
Uh, I like it a lot, uh, but if it was at the caliber of Baby Blue, this would have been the number one for the year. Okay, another honorable mention. So I, I, am, a, I am a Brian Ferry and Roxy Music fan, so Brian Ferry, uh, and this album is called Bittersweet. This was released at the start of 2019 and is... Um, redone versions of fairy solo songs and Roxy songs done in a sort of a 1920s jazz style. I like jazz, I like Roxy music, so the, these tend to work very well for me. Uh, Fairy's vocals on this are still very good, but you can tell that they're getting a little, a little weak. I would have preferred uh, a brand new album of uh, new material from Fairy instead of this, but still, being a big fan as I am, um, I have to get this. Okay, the next honorable mention is sort of a compilation of sorts. Uh, it's this album called Three Times Four, and it's by the Paisley Underground Bands who reformed it and made this album. Uh, it's called Three Times Four because there's four bands on here, and each band has done three cover songs of the other three bands. Okay, so you have uh, The Bangles, Rain Parade, Dream Syndicate and what was the other band? Uh, the Three O'Clock. Um, each doing three songs. So uh, the Dream Syndicate is easily my favorite of these bands here. They did cover songs of the Bangles, the Rain Parade, and the Three O'Clock. Um, excellent album. I would highly recommend this. Uh, so I've shown a lot of reggae on my uh, channel, not as much as uh, Doug at Fat City Vinyl, but I've shown my fair share of reggae. Lee Perry, uh, Rainford. Uh, this is your typical Lee Perry uh, ramblings about Ja Rastafari uh, with a little bit of an electronic feel on some of these tracks because it was produced by Adrian Sherwood. Uh, but there's, you know, uh, enough roots reggae on here to make this uh, a reggae album, in my opinion. Another honorable mention. And then the last of the honorable mentions before we get into the top 10. And uh, this is an album that I would have expected to have been in my top 10. I do like the album, uh, but there are others that I like more and, and play more often. The Claypool Lennon Delirium. South of Reality. So, of course, this is Les Claypool of Primus on bass and vocals, Sean Lennon on guitar and vocals, and these guys um, formed this band uh, a, few, a couple of years ago. This is their second album, and they're, they're pretty good partners with one another uh, on this. Great, great collaboration. I, I enjoy this more than uh, the last Primus album, which was a concept album. Um, there's some psychedelic... Uh, elements to this. Uh, Les Claypool's bass is very prominent in the mix. Uh, so if you're a fan of any of that, this is an album that's worth uh, worth picking up for sure. Okay, now into the top 10. And I mentioned before some bands that have re reformed. The, the number 10 album is for Royal Trucks, White Stuff. I got this back, I think, around September, even though it was released earlier in the year. Uh, so I wasn't into Royal Trucks when they were around back, I guess, in the 90s. It was the, sort of their hey, their heyday. Um, but I, I really, really enjoy this album. This sort of has an MC5 uh, kind of feel to me with, uh, you know, guitar based, but but does has a bit of a groove. Uh, really nice bass and drums on this. So white stuff, but number 10. Another band that reformed, and I think this is now their, I want to say, fourth album since reforming in the early 2000s, 2000s The Pixies, Beyond, Beyond the Eerie, or Beyond the Eyrie, I think it's Eerie, Beyond the Eerie. Um, I mean, I don't think The Pixies are ever going to match their original string of four albums, but having said that, you know, uh, you got Paws on, on bass instead of Kim Deal. 
she does a very good job on bass. She has uh, adds some great vocals to this. Some people will always say, "Well, she's not Kim D." Well, she's not, but you know, this this is a very good, uh, very good Pixies album. Uh, Catfish Catfish Kate is one an, another of my favorite singles of the year, uh, and it comes from this album. So that's number nine. <clears throat> a band that I, um, again, was not into back in their heyday, which was primarily the 90s. Um, and then they reformed. Uh, they broke up the in the early 2000s, and then they reformed in the early 2010s. Um, the lineup is, is, has changed a little bit, but one constant member, Robert Pollard, guided by voices. This is called Warp and Woof. Uh, Robert Pollard is one of the most prolific writers out there. This is one of three albums that um, Guided by Voices released in 2019. It was the second one. It's the only one that I got. Uh, it's a nightmare trying to keep up with their releases and their discography. Excuse me. Um, 24 short tracks on this. One number ends, goes right into another. Um... And the only reason I picked up this particular Guided by Voices album was it went down in price, so I, I picked it up, and it's a great album. I, I think it's, I mean, it's not as great as B-1000 and some of those albums in the 2000s, but it's pretty good. It's uh, He's always been described as sort of an alternative um, McCartney and Lennon kind of sounding because, you know, it's melodic, but it but it's got that indie sort of alternative feel to it. Warp and Woof. That was number eight. Number seven, uh, again, big fan of the band Pavement back in the 90s. This is Stephen Malcolmus, uh, Groove Denied. Uh, this album is unique in that um, Steve Malcolmus was making albums with his band The Jicks. This is a truly solo album from Steve Malcolmus. Uh, the name Groove Denied really means that um, he actually had this album originally rejected by his label because it wasn't Stephen Malcolmus sounding, enough Steve Malcolmus sounding type album. Uh, and that is because there's some heavy electronic uh, elements of this album, uh, mainly on side one. Uh, and then side two gets more into his typical kind of stuff. So if you like sort of a pavement feel with uh, some electronic elements, this is a good album. So that's number seven. Number six, I showed this band earlier in the Three Times Four album. This is their uh, their own album that they released in 2019. The Dream Syndicate uh, called These Times. Uh, so again, Paisley Underground Sound. Uh, this is the second Dream Syndicate album that they've made since their reformation. Um, I also got their album from 2017. Uh, that appeared very high on my list, I think probably around three or four. This is appearing at uh, number six. Uh, I would say those the two albums are probably equally as good and uh, maybe not to the level of their 80s material, but still very, very good. Um, I think if you're a Dream Syndicate fan back of the material, material in the 80s, you're going to like this. A lot of dueling guitar on that, which is typical for them. Okay, top five. So this year I've picked up a lot of Husker Du albums on vinyl. Um, I was always sort of a casual fan. Husker Du, Sugar, Bob Mould, Solo. Uh, Bob Mould's latest solo album, Sunshine Rock, comes in at number five. Uh, this is a, a very good Bob Mould album uh probably in his top three of his solo albums what i really like about this album is the use of strings along with the heavy guitar um, they tend to blend really really nicely and, and and tastefully on this sunshine rock at number five number four an album that i just picked up in the last couple of months alcest uh this is called spiritual instinct for those of you that don't know Alcest, uh, this is a band that's relatively new to me. Um, they are uh, affiliated with that uh, Black Gaze 
uh, shoegaze kind of movement, sort of on the heavier side of shoegaze. Uh, it's led by one guy, even though there is a band on here, one guy, friend, he's from France, his name is Neige, uh, which means snow. Um, I picked up their first album, Souvenir d'Autre Monde, um, which is uh, highly shoegaze. Uh, what makes this, I guess, black metal, black gaze, uh, is sometimes the, the screamo kind of vocals on some tracks. Uh, which is not typically my thing, but it doesn't bother me on here. I, but I'm, I've come to this really for the shoegaze elements. Fantastic, fantastic shoegaze type guitars. And, and some people would describe this as um, it's black metal with a shoegaze influence. I would call it it's shoegaze with a black metal influence. Because the, the emphasis definitely is on the shoegaze and that's why I like this. Alcest, um, this is probably the newest artist that I have on this list who I think he started making albums as Alcest back in 2005, 2006 or so. Uh, and this is the second one that I've picked up. I'll definitely be uh, picking up more. So number four. And then an album that I got at the very start of the year and actually uh, was at my number one spot for most of the year, <clears throat> but has dropped to number three. The Specials and their album Encore. I did a, a review of this when it when it came out, sort of on my first impressions and uh, and so forth back I think in January, February around there. Uh, I still really like this album. I still play it a lot. Um, reggae ska with less of a punk edge than their. Uh, debut album, but still I think if you're a specials fan you, you'll like this, but it is definitely more on the I don't know slower side reggae side I know some people who like the punkier edge won't uh, won't be into that uh, But still a lot of catchy uh, tracks on here some really good uh, topical lyrics um, And yeah, I, I still play this album quite often so number three the specials encore Number two uh, so you guys have heard me mention Shoegaze an awful lot. Um, one of the bands that I did like back in the 90s was Lush. Uh, and this is an album by a former member of Lush, Mickey. Um, she was the one with the red, red hair. Uh, they shared the vocals back then. Um, she formed this band, Peroshka. I showed this recently, probably in my last, I don't know, two or three videos. Uh, this is called Brickbat. This is more dream pop than it is shoegaze, um, but her vocals are very identifiable there. I think if you're a Lush fan, you have to pick this up. Um, the songs are, are very melodic, very catchy, some great chiming dream pop guitars. This is just one sec, guys. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so, so uh, Peroshka, um, Brick Bad is the name of the album. Very catchy. Um, if you're, this is a, a, I was saying this was a, a bit of a super group of sorts. I, I mentioned Mickey, obviously from Lush, who's the leader here. Uh, but you have the guitarist from Moose, who I think is her uh, her partner, significant other. Uh, you have the bass player from Modern English. Um, I'll stop the world and melt, melt with you. Uh, and I guess the drummer from Elastica, who was playing when Lush reformed a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, check out some samples of this on YouTube. They have a KEXP uh, session that they, that they did. Um, I just love the sound of this album. Uh, I love Lush and, uh, you know, um, again, not as shoegazy as Lush, but, but still excellent. Okay, then number one, a shoegaze album. Big surprise, right? Swerve Driver, Future Ruins. Uh, Swerve Driver, again, one of the shoegaze bands that reunited within the last, uh, I don't know, five to ten years. This is their second album they've made since they reunited. They made four albums back in the 90s. Uh, those albums, uh, for the most part, are better than this, especially the first three. Uh, Mescal Head, Rays being the, the big albums out of the, that first four. 
They've made two albums since the reformation. Um, they're equally as good and uh, have uh, deserving places in their discography. Future Ruins, um, very typical uh, Swerve Driver, maybe not as he heavy. Swerve Driver have always been sort of on the heavier side of shoegaze, uh, but always lumped in with that being from, I guess, Oxford, uh, same, same place as Ride. Um, but yeah, so this has still got two main members from Swerve Driver, um, Adam Franklin being the leader, Jimmy Hartridge, uh, the guitarist. Uh, I think as long as you have those two members plus anybody else, um, it's a Swerve Driver album. Um, I just find myself putting this on a lot, and it's, again, very melodic, great guitars, everything you'd expect from Swerve Driver, uh, maybe a little less heavy you've got here. So again, if you're a fan of Shoegaze, if you're a fan of Swerve Driver, this, uh, I, I'd recommend this. And uh, obviously I love it since it's my number one album of the year. Okay guys, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'd appreciate any comments and uh, I, I'm probably not gonna make another video before the end of the year. So uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everyone. Happy New Year. And um, if I don't make another video, I'll, I'll see you then in the new year. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.